Lots of construction going on at Universal Studios Hollywood for Halloween Horror Nights, but that's not why we're here today. No, we're here to go back to Isla Nublar to check out Jurassic World The Ride, which is now officially, 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 officially opened. Hello! We're back at Universal Studios Hollywood to do another Jurassic World video. Since the last time we were here, we were here on technical rehearsals and we advertised it as if technical rehearsals were going to go on for a while and literally the next day they announced that the ride was officially open. <laughs> so no real changes were made was my understanding, but I was very curious now that it's been about a week or so, almost two weeks actually, since the ride is officially open. Um, if anything's changed on the ride, if they've done anything to improve it. I know we were a little harsh on it last time. It was definitely coming at it from a fanboy perspective on Jurassic Park, and I don't think that's fair to the ride. So today I'm gonna go back on the ride. We're gonna see if anything's changed since the grand opening has occurred. Oh, also it had its media event with uh, its star-spangled media event, um, where Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard were there. So that was pretty cool too. But this ride is officially open. People that are saying that there's more to come, they're gonna do more updates. It's not entirely likely that any major changes are going to be made to this ride going forward. This is the ride. So today we're going to go on it, see if any changes were made, and then afterwards we're going to talk about it again. Not from a Jurassic Park standpoint, but more of a Jurassic World standpoint. So yeah, let's take a positive spin on things today and give Jurassic World the ride another shot. Come explore with me. Flames are officially on, and the wait time is a staggering 300 minutes. Before we jump on the ride, which is an astonishing 300 minute wait, ugh. Uh, let's go look at some of the other stuff that Jurassic World has going on, because some of their meet and greets are incredible. One of the most popular things here is the, the blue Velociraptor meet and greet. This was here actually before Jurassic World The Ride opened, but also has it has taken a massive upgrade. If you've seen our past videos, you already know how they've improved the station. But also, I don't know. I've gotten a picture with her before. She like looks better. Are you okay over here, sir? She looks good. Putting the sunglasses on is a defense method. Very smart. Is this dad? Now that Dad sees it safe, he'll jump. Impressive. When this happens, we want to take a couple steps back, make some space. Now this training for Blue is new. She's used to seeing people in front, not so much over here. Anyway. They have a few different meet and greets. They have the blue meet and greet, and then they also have another dinosaur that you can meet and greet that I think is even more impressive. The Triceratops is coming out. It's still. The most impressive character meet and greet I've ever seen. Wow. Look at that thing, guys. That is the coolest thing. So if you go on one side of her, you can actually pet the Triceratops. We've done it before in the past. It's really cool, but look at that. Look at how her eyes blink. If you want to touch her, just go to the left side of her belly. Look at that. The way the nostrils move, and the beak moves. Even the detail on the horns are incredible. Even the way the tail moves. And as a childhood dream of going to Jurassic Park, I think that, that is the most realistic thing I've ever seen at a Universal Park. It is so cool. I'm still geeking out over it, and this is the second time I've seen it. <laughs> also, you can see, off to our right here, there's a, a little bit of like a Triceratops paddock, which is interesting, because it kind of looks temporary. It looks like they weren't intending it to go here, but maybe, maybe it was. Anyway, this is sort of new from the last time that we were here. The Raptor Encounter's right there, and their doors are labeled two and three, and then this one's labeled zero one, so maybe it was always intended. 
but it does look a little temporary. Hmm. Anyway, there is a Triceratops at Universal Studios Hollywood, and it will blow your mind. One area we haven't uh, displayed though is the Dino Play, the new Dino Play area. When it first opened, this used to just be the Triceratops down there. And they've since, since the uh, renovation, added all the like above kind of kid play area. So this new Jurassic themed jungle gym has been added. And uh, I bet you like four or five year old me would have geeked out over that. So that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, the line for Jurassic World is long. Holy cow, look at that. This is the line spilling out into the main area. It goes all the way over there, then on the other side of the bridge, and then all the way over here. And there's the back side of the arch. Let's check out to see if uh, Jurassic Outfitters still has some of the stuff in from opening day. Real quick, we can check out some of the Jurassic World merchandise again. It's pins, Jurassic World pins, which are $8. Same design with a keychain. Also $8. Here's the official opening day shirt. They still have some of these available. They're $25. On the side you can see it says Jurassic World The Ride Grand Opening. They also have the opening day Jurassic World pin still available. The gates open and it reveals a cast member on the inside. They had a, I don't know, probably three dozen or so still behind the cash register or right in front of it. So uh, if you come in the next couple weeks, so be, sure uh, be sure to pick up one of these. Also, it's only 13 bucks, so that's not that bad. In terms of other merchandise here, there's a ton. And you can probably uh, direct you to the link above if you look at one of our older videos. We have a pricing on a lot of it. Um, I've never seen this before. Jurassic Park license plate? $13 as well. $13 seems to be the recurring thing, but that's kind of awesome. If I could legally have it on my car, I would. <laughs> so they have this uh, cool Isla Nublar. Yeah, here. It's a tank for $33. See, this is actually themed to the island, though. That's, that's the kind of merchandise that I enjoy. I wish they had a shirt like this for dudes, though. <laughs> New thermos here, water bottle, twenty-seven dollars. Just their regular Jurassic World shirts. Oh, cool! It's got the you can see on the back of it. It's got the the island, the layout of the park. So we'll zoom in on the lagoon. That's where all the stuff, the majority of the stuff in Jurassic World took place. And the price on that shirt is twenty-seven dollars. See, so they've got all this vintage Jurassic Park merchandise as well just in case you miss some of the ride. I actually like how it's kind of all off in the corner. By the way, I shifted up to the upper lots um, gift shop, which is all Jurassic World and Jurassic Park themed right now. So if something's out at Jurassic Outfitters, head up here, because they've got a bunch of stuff. It's a rumor, it's not confirmed, but there is uh, a reason why the cannons don't go off as much anymore. Um, well, really, they haven't gone off at all, I think, since the ride has officially been opened. I haven't seen anybody report on it yet. But the reason they're not going off is because the splashback is very close to the raptor paddock. Oh, hold on. Oh, I thought I was gonna get sprayed. You can see how wet it is here. But uh, that could be playing into why, could, again, not confirmed, why these cannons aren't going off right now, why it's just the boat splash happening. Because, yeah, when those bad boys used to pop off before the ride officially ended, you would get drenched on this thing. So, as you can see, just the splash over here is coming. I can't imagine if the actual raptors were out here and that thing was going off. Then again, at a certain time of day, you can see that they closed down the raptor paddock. So, like the blue meet and greet's done. Why not put them at full blast? But I suppose it is the end of the day, so it's cold. Anyway. That's the food for thought there, but yeah, that's the a potential reason why those cannons aren't going off anymore. Not confirmed, though. The sign is illuminated. You guys ever notice the ticker on the bottom of the uh, the TVs in the line? It's kind of cool. It's got a bunch of different Easter eggs for the land.
apex predator of the deep. Difficulties. I know a lot of people are posting videos where it's, oh, dress World, the ride broke down. I was on it while it broke down. Like, it stopped five times while we were on it. Uh, and there's something wrong with that, because it's all about, like, we talked about in the original video, a lot of the last room is about timing. And if timing is off, the boat's running behind, if something happens that delays the boat, then the rest of the boat suffer, because you can't force people through. Things won't time out in the last room, especially the last room. So today I'm gonna to take an, a positive approach and I'm gonna say the five best things that Jurassic World Ride does right. One of, the, one of the cool things about Jurassic World Ride that it gets right, there's a lot going on in that last scene. There's a lot of moving animatronics. There's a lot of things that are timed out to specific moments. First the Dilophosaurus come up, then Blue comes out from the side, then you see the Indominus starting to roar into a different angle, and then finally the T-Rex comes out at the end. Is it different than what we were expecting? Maybe, but that doesn't mean it's bad. So I think that is the first thing to talk about is that the last room, from an engineering feat, is pretty impressive how much is going on in that one small space. So I think that's worth acknowledging, it's good. 
I guess the next area to talk about would be jumping all the way back to the beginning. And in our original video, we talked about how we weren't super impressed with the screens. And the props that I will give it is that if you look at the edges of the screen while you're going through, and it's hard to see on video, so it won't work as well. But if you look at the edges of the screen while you're going through, you can see that they've layered it in a way, I don't know if it's curved, I would love to see how the technology works, because they've layered it in a way that plants on the side of it seem like they're floating in three-dimensional space. So it adds additional depth when the Mosasaur is swimming from a certain angle. So it looks like you know, all these plants are like kind of up against the glass while the Mosasaur is further away from it. It's a cool effect and it's probably the best executed effect in there. Um, in terms of how you appreciate the glass breaking and stuff like that, it is, I do think the stuff that is on the screen looks good. I'm still not overly impressed with how, I don't think they hid the, the water effects enough. It doesn't look like it's coming from the, the glass itself. You can clearly see if you look up into the water. They didn't really hide where the water sprays at you. You can kind of see that it's clearly coming from not the glass, but a designated part of the concrete above it. But I always thought the screens looked good. Um, I just imagined that room looking great. And I think part of that issue was I always assumed it would be uh, kind of like SeaWorld is with the shark tunnel, where the Mosasaur would be swimming over you constantly rather than the other way around, which is the Mosasaur, you know, it, it's just screens on either side, and the Mosasaur is essentially like a U pattern as the boat goes through that U pattern. Um, it's still. I get how it works. I don't prefer it working. I think it would have been really cool if it was like a shark tunnel. But again, we're getting into something that's like I wants and not what they executed. So for what they did, it looks pretty good. I really, really like how they restored the baby Stegosaurus. I think that that was one of the last things to get removed uh, a couple months before it officially shut down. And when it was gone, there was such an absence of stuff in that space. Like the big Stegosaurus stayed, that was always there. But man, you like felt it when the baby Stegosaurus wasn't up there. You were just staring at that rock for such a long time and there was just nothing up there. It's really nice to see it back. I think that is one of the most fluid of the old animatronics. You can clearly tell that they put work into restoring that and it's a nice addition to have it back. And a nice original callback, which is something I appreciate for that section. Whether or not you care that those have been recycled or not, I do actually like that that middle section does have multiple dinosaurs. Could they put the copies back in, pulling on the, the uh, popcorn? I, yeah. I mean, it would add to it. it would It wouldn't take anything away from that section. I'm kind of surprised they did take it away. But uh, it's not a deal breaker, so I was glad that that section remained. Number four, I do like the inclusion of Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard and B.D. Wong. I think it does make it more tied into the movie franchise. The first film in the queue line did have video of uh, Richard Attenborough as John Hammond, which was great. It was a nice moment. The ride itself had no, like Sam Nia, like, I mean, they wouldn't be involved, but there was no character actors in it. Because Jurassic World is so associated with Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, it was nice to get them included in the ride. So that was a cool addition. And finally, five. <laughs> This has nothing to do with the ride itself, but I think what Universal did when they reimagined the whole Isla Nublar uh, area is they they completely amplified it. So the lower lot has always been more of a, a I mean really Universal Studios Hollywood in general has always been more of a studio friendly environment. So it was always like rather than you were in the movies, you were sort of seeing how the movies were made and then riding rides that kind of showcased how the movies are made. It was only recently that they started getting into things like Harry Potter or even, I mean, you can't go back to The Mummy or the original Jurassic Park The Ride and be like, oh, you're like living the movies, which there was nothing wrong with that. But they definitely took Jurassic World and put almost more love into the surrounding area. Um, and it feels so much better. It looks better, the food is better at Jurassic Cafe. Um, the Outfitter has actual physical merchandise for once, which is nice because Jurassic World, they really started to backpedal on the Jurassic Park merchandise at the end. I mean, the arches, everything about it looks great. So, 
My big, big prop, and the best thing I think Universal did with this whole renovation was they really changed the Jurassic World aesthetic around the ride. And between the meet and greets, which is really the thing I'm highest on, because the Triceratops and Blue look excellent, and then just the new food offerings, the new merchandise, and the visual aesthetic uh, alone makes it feel like you're in Jurassic World. And I think that is a feat in itself. So props to Universal Studios Hollywood for making the lower lot a lot better in that essence. So that's it. Um, do I still have criticisms? Yes. Are there things I'm still disappointed by? Yes. I didn't change my stuff by them. But I do think there's a lot to be appreciated about Jurassic World The Ride. And remember, there's a lot of kids that grew up watching Jurassic World before Jurassic Park. And so this ride isn't for us as much as it's for them. And I think it's a good point to address. So regardless of what I think, regardless of what James thinks, regardless of anybody that likes or doesn't like the ride, all you can do is enjoy it for yourself. If you don't enjoy it, that's okay. But it's not right for anybody to take any enjoyment from anybody else. And sometimes that's the issue with toxic fandom, is that my opinion's the only one that's right, and therefore nobody else feels, or nobody else has an opinion. And it's like, that's not the right way to go about it. I can say that I didn't enjoy something, but that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it. So, that's my speech. I know you've heard it a million times. I know everyone at Galaxy's Edge experiences the same thing every day, because the Star Wars fandom, and I'm part of it, it has its own issues where they're very, very aggressive about certain things and have basically turned on Galaxy's Edge. The point is, love what you love, be passionate about it, and if you want to vlog about it, vlog about it. And that's my uh, second official ride on Jurassic World The Ride. I enjoyed it a little bit more than the first time. A lot of that was because the first time I was looking through a viewfinder and I learned don't do that because everything is much larger. The Indominus looked much larger, the T-Rex looked a lot better. I switched to this camera in particular that we're on right now because it has a better low light sensor so that you can actually see that. Hopefully that comes across. I guess all that said, thanks for exploring with me today. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, I didn't have to, I have an express pass, thank God, because Jurassic World, it was legit. I know people are like, oh, it's 300 minutes and it ends up being like, you know, 90 minutes or something like that. Even the first time we were there, it was 60 minutes and we only waited like 20. Um, that line was long. That line was 300 minutes. I waited 35 minutes in Express just to get into the Express queue. So, it's a very popular ride, obviously. So, come enjoy it. Come to Universal Studios Hollywood. It's a very good attraction and uh, it's worth riding. It's a must do every time you come here. So, again, not changing my tune. I still have criticisms of the ride. But uh, it is worth noting that there's a lot to enjoy about Jurassic World The Ride. So, that's it. And uh, until next time, we'll see you in the happy place. All right, I thought the vlog was over, but look at that sunset. Holy cow. San Fernando Valley. That is, that is unreal. All right, explorers, thanks for exploring with us. We'll see you next time in the happy place.